Hello, overclockers. I'm 8-Pack. And as you're well aware by now, I am the greatest at everything I take a hand in. And that includes, of course, squats, bicep curls, and chest pressing. I'm also not too bad at overclocking. As you'll know this by the fact that I've had probably about 96 world records, I think, and been world champion for three years consecutive. But I don't mean to brag, I'm fairly modest. What I'm gonna be covering in this video is my new CPU, the 8PU. Now, what we're gonna be covering as always is gonna be cooling, power draw, and performance. And in summary, we can already say it's an absolute beast just like me. So, without further ado, let's get on to the meat of this video. So let's start by going through the details of this behemoth processor. What we're seeing here is 88 cores with revolutionary octo-threading power, which I've developed using both squats and bicep curls. With this octo-threading technology, we've got a massive 704 unbelievably fast 8 gigahertz threads. And not only is 8 gigahertz the basic non-turbo boost frequency, we've got an 8.8 .8 gigahertz massive turbo boost frequency, which is pretty much a world record for any other CPU on the market on LN2 cooling. This CPU can do that without even a heatsink. Unbelievable performance. Think of those CPUs where overclockers are using liquid helium to get around those frequencies, and this CPU, you don't even need an air cooler. Absolutely off the chart innovation by myself. And finally, the innovative technology in this CPU is 8D of vCache technology with 88 megabytes of cache size. Now this technology has again been developed, of course, by myself here in Stoke, using bits of silicon, a blowtorch, and a CNC machine. Unbelievable. And finally, the APU on this CPU, it can address both HDMI and DVI. It's equivalent to what we'd estimate an NVIDIA 8 series card to be, and that's in raster performance. This megatastic benchmark thrashing CPU comes bundled with this superb motherboard that we have next to us here. This motherboard is on a completely new socket, which is LJ8888 and on a new chipset, which is 8-pack Z7378. I know a bit of a mouthful, but I thought I'd, you know, span it out to sound even better than it actually is, which is in fact impossible. Also, this motherboard has on board muscled up audio, which I developed with, yes, these guns you see, and in Microsoft Paint. Does this platform support overclocking? Of course it does. It supports every type of overclocking. You can overclock the CPU, you can overclock the memory, you can overclock the APU, you can overclock the NVMe drives. It's got overclocking, all right. Everything can be overclocked. This board and this platform supports up to 800 gigabytes of DDR8 memory that as a stock frequency is clocked to 8,000 megahertz but can easily clock up to 8888 megahertz without any problem. And in fact, you can push it further if you wish. Obviously, the memory is in eight channel uh, to get the best out of the CPU and the APU for your games and other stuff that you want to do, including uh, YouTube videos, focusing on the overclockers channel and actually focusing on 8-pack because to the rest of the channel, not really worth watching. As for the price of this phenomenal setup, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. So don't bother asking and just get your wallets out. It's 888 pounds and 88 pence. And like I said, we have plenty of stock. And if we don't have stock, I can make you one in eight minutes. The cooling and power draw of this bundle, let's hit up that now. The TDP of the CPU as stated is eight watts. But what you'll find when it's running benchmarks or put in through my extensive benchmark suite that doesn't include any gaming, it's going to run it to up to about 800 watts. And that's obviously under stock, but under maximum load. So when you're overclocking, uh, we would say that uh, before boost, it's using about 10 watts. 
And then after boost, it's up to around one kilowatt. Unbelievable. The maximum temperature at stock without a heatsink is 88 degrees C, and the maximum temperatures at full load is 89 degrees C. You don't need water cooling, you don't need AIO, and you certainly don't need liquid nitrogen. I myself, on MS Paint and a couple of other programs, have managed to engineer a thermal solution for this using only a minimum thickness IHS and not even bothering to solder that on. And everything is working perfectly fine. No overheating of the CPU, no overheating of the APU, and certainly no problems for these massive VRMs that we've got on the board here. I've really built a CPU that's phenomenal in cooling performance here, and no one can dispute that in any review. But Finally, I better plug my own 8-pack PSU for this. So, if you want to run this CPU at its maximum, do buy the 2000 watt 8-pack PSU. And obviously, you'll be running it most of the time at 8 watts or 889 watts, whatever that may be. So, for this review, my stock testing system was the 8-pack 8PU, 8-pack motherboard, 8 sticks of 8-pack team group RAM, all running 8,888 megahertz with overclocking headroom in them, 8-pack 2000 watt PSU as it's mandatory, no GPU because we're running on effectively an 8-series graphics card here that's got amazing raster performance, so we didn't bother with adding an additional add-in card. Finally, the storage on this uh, system is an SN850X, the X standing for extremely good, especially when overclocked by the pack himself. The rest of the time, it's just a standard drive, of course. Now, to get the system running well, I've installed Windows 88 and updated that to the latest drivers, which were written by myself on a very cheap laptop. And I can't guarantee any stability in anything but eight games and the benchmarking suite that I've put together, which as usual, is everything I wanna run and nothing the viewers care about. So. What were the stock results when I ran this fantastic bundle through my uh, benchmarking suite? And what I'm doing here is comparing it against the competition. Well, there is no competition, let's be honest. But we tested it against the flagship 9950X 3D CPU by AMD and an Intel Core Ultra 285K. And what we found out was, in Cinebench R23, it dominated. In Cinebench R24, it reigned supreme. In 3D Mark CPU profile, it was such a joke, it broke the benchmark. The times per extreme, it showcases both GPU power and CPU power, and again, it absolutely decimated anything that anyone else can throw at it. In Fire Strike, it obliterated the competition. It improved uh, Final Fantasy by such a score we can barely fit the graph on the screen. It was an unstoppable force in superposition. In Unigen Valley, the results on this uh, system at 4K or even 8K were far superior to anything that's available now, even at 1080p or 780p. Yep, it absolutely destroyed it. It was a performance monster in Monster Hunter. Even on ultra settings, it literally toasted everything. And it inserted total dominance in Blender, where it was taking around eight seconds to complete a task that these other CPUs take well over an hour. So finally, you can say that this bundle at stock was a uh, people's elder. It was also a tombstone pile driver. It was a stone cold stunner. And it was a thrust kick by Shawn Michaels himself. So now we've talked about stock results, let's move on to overclocking. Well, the overclocking methodology on this system is as easy as possible. And I needed to make it that way because there's not many people with the skills to do proper overclocking. And you know, no one's gonna match my skills anyway. So what we've done here in the BIOS is simple sliders. And to get the best out of the CPU, all you have to do is literally slide them to the maximum. Don't do anything else, simple. Slide to the maximum, F10, enter, reboot, and then you have the massive improvements from overclocking. Now what we see from overclocking is the CPU frequency has gone from 8.8 .8 gigahertz to 8.88 gigahertz. And obviously under some workloads, it is boosting a little bit higher than that, but we can't guarantee that. And we'll include that in the small print with the bundle. Now, what I did find is if I'm trying to push this uh, CPU even further using software that I wrote myself on a cheap laptop, I can max out to around 18 gigahertz before the system starts to become slightly unresponsive and a little bit unstable. But so long as it plays Minecraft, we're all happy, right? The temperatures uh, of this CPU went overclocked 
have now moved up from 88 degrees C to 88.8 degrees C. So all this overclocking headroom, you're only actually gaining an extra 0.8 C, which is pretty good. Overall, it does run, therefore, a little bit hotter and a little bit more power hungry, but all of that's fine when we're really punishing the workloads. So, what were the results from overclocking this fantastic bundle through my entire benchmark suite? Well, I'll let the graphs do the talking this time, as it's starting to feel a little bit like bullying, and we know, all know how merciful 8-pack can be. Or, I can quickly summarize and say the results are like comparing The Undertaker against Dork the Clown in a no holes barred cage match with an elimination chamber wrapped around it. So, what are my 8-pack thoughts on this amazing CPU? Well, of course, this is the greatest CPU ever made. Not just by me, by anyone all around the world. No one has even touched on this technology before. And let's be honest, they never will. It's absolutely the ultimate CPU. Everything's built in. You don't need to do anything. Wang it in your system with an 8-pack PSU, and you're going to be good to go for at least 50 years. Is this going into 8-pack systems? Of course it is. Why do you think we developed it here at Overclockers? And finally, when's it going to be available? We're not quite sure, but there will be plenty of stock. And I'm going to take this prototype CPU now downstairs and get some manufactured on the CNC machine. And you know, just pass my blowtorch over it. And there, there you go. This epic CPU motherboard combo is only available at Overclockers UK. And I cannot wait to bring it to you. Oh,